Salutations! My name is Eclipse, EQ for short, and welcome to 100 Days in Pixelmon. In this video, I will be trying to survive and conquer all of Pixelmon. Okay, maybe that's a little over embellishing, but I will be doing my best to experience all that Pixelmon has to offer. And to make sure I stay on track, I have three goals. The first is simple. I've never played Pixelmon before, despite being ass, and I wanted to see what all the talk is about. The second is a little crazier, but hey, it's an EQ video. What did you expect? In this server I'm on, there are 16 different types of gyms, and I need to topple at least one of them. And finally, it's a little cliche, but I want to catch a legendary Pokemon. So with those goals in place, I can shed some light on how this is going to work a bit. Pixelmon to me feels kind of bare bones in its vanilla state, which is why I'm happy to announce that I teamed up with SmashMC for this video. SmashMC is a Pixelmon server that adds tons of features to really flesh out the Pixelmon experience. Some of these features include the aforementioned 16 gyms, battle towers, dungeons to explore, their own custom war zone where legendaries spawn constantly, and you can steal little Timmy's best bond by beating him in a battle. I mean, there are tons of other features, but I'd rather show than tell, so let's get on with it. Once again, thank you to Smash MC for making this whole thing possible. And if you guys want to join the server yourself, then here's the IP for you. Oh, and one more thing, this video took me 70 plus hours to make. So if you could do me a favor and consider hitting that like button and subscribing, it's free, you can always change your mind, and it would make me really happy. Oh, and make sure to leave a comment for the algorithm gods. And with all that out of the way, welcome to Pixelmon 100 Days. I loaded up the server on day one and I have a confession to make. Even though I have played a lot of Pokemon in my day, I have never, ever played Pixelmon. So I genuinely have no idea what I'm gonna be doing these 100 days, but I have played Pokemon and I've played Minecraft, so hopefully that knowledge will overlap. The first thing you have to do when you join Pokesmash is to choose a server. I picked Mew because it's the one my friend chose and had the least amount of people in it, so hopefully everything isn't already ransacked. Hopefully. When I joined, I was given the option of picking from every starter that has ever existed in Pokemon, and I am real indecisive, so this is gonna take a while. Day 25, I finally picked Cyndaquil. <laughs> Nah, okay, just kidding. But for real, I did choose Cyndaquil and I didn't get a shiny starter, even though you're supposed to, you got like a 90% chance, but that's okay, I'm not bitter. Anyways, after failing to click on the teleport NPC, I typed slash RTP and we're off. And immediately I was greeted with the warmest welcome possible. It's been 35 seconds. You are, you are a whole unit. I am a infant child, please let me leave. Oh. Well, that's the Nuzlocke, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I don't want to waste a revive because I'll need them for something later. So for now, I'm just dragging around a dead corpse. <laughs> Lovely. After a while of running, I found a dark forest. And little fun fact about me, I am a dark oak tree stan. Screw being a dream stan or a K-pop stan. No, I am a dark oak stan. After deciding this was a perfect place to settle down for the rest of my life, I started constructing my cabin. I'm trying to capture the same vibe that Pokemon houses have. You know, like a little cottage or cabin in the woods feel. It's a work in progress, but I think it's going to be worth it. Day two, I wanted to get a lay of the land I now own. And it turns out I'm not alone. Or at least I wasn't the first person here. Let's hope they have a healer because I'm still toting around a dead Cyndaquil carcass. They also have apricorn trees growing in their front yard and I mean I don't see anyone here and apricorns do grow back. Please don't ban me Seared but I'm eating these. Later that day while I was trying to totally not rob my neighbors blind which I couldn't do anyway because they had everything claimed I was approached by the glorious Gardevoir and I was determined to catch him. Only problem was they were level 60 and I'm level 5. But something you should know about me I don't play games the way they should be played. Technically, any Pokemon can be caught without fighting it. It just has a low catch rate. Gardevoir is just like a 4% with no damage or something. I don't know. I'm not a stat nerd. But what that does mean is that I can take the 40 or so Pokeballs they give you when you join the server and just spam them. When Cyndaquil dies, just go back to the healer. And if I keep trying, I should succeed. Got it! So on day three, I have a level 60. Good progress. But this is still Minecraft, so we gotta head into the mines. This mod pack has a couple new ores that are essential in building things like healers or PCs or basically anything Pokemon related. And that night I smelted all the ores I got and then I made an anvil. No, not that anvil, 
that anvil. And with a hammer, I can start banging iron and making balls. God, I'm such a child. <laughs> I promise I am an adult. I promise. No one believes me, but I promise I am an adult. Day four, I started planting apricorns of my own. I can't keep stealing from the neighbors forever, you know? And once I cook these apricorns, I can use them to make Pokeball tops. This process takes forever. Luckily, you guys don't have to watch it. Skip. I'm back in the mines day five, and I discovered something. This is uber peaceful mode. So not only are there no mobs, besides Pokemon, or fall damage, but you can't even get burned by lava. I think this is gonna be a very chill 100 days, as opposed to my crazy uber 100 days with dragons and goblins and golems and death. Speaking of which, that does remind me of something. Oh well, for now, I found a hunter in the caves and I gotta catch him. And with Gardevoir, he was easy to catch. Boom, that's three. Once I made it back to my house, I made a healer and whacked my anvil for an hour, and then Cyndaquil evolved and I got this beautiful animation. I honestly had no idea this mod pack was as fleshed out and as well made as it is. Like, look at this. The ruby, sapphire, and crystal ores are used to make the team suits from each Pokemon game. That's so sick. As the sun was going down, I chopped more trees and added to my cabin all night. While I was building, I was encountered by a big fuck off blue mega Ampharos that was level 130. What the fuck shit? Sorry, excuse my French. What I meant to say, was what the fuck ampersand shit is that? It kicked my ass. That's why I'm gonna leave that beast alone for now. I don't know the pecking order of these lands, but I'm pretty sure that she's in charge. So I just cowered back to my base and continued building on that. They left for now and I was able to catch a Manetric. That's four. Clearly, I'm gonna need to get stronger if things like that exist. Day seven, I decided to venture out. Using the claimless feature, I can always teleport back to my claims, i.e. my house, so I can just slash RTP and teleport around every two minutes. And this seems to be the wave because I found an abandoned tower that had some ghost types in it and choice specs at the top. Later that morning, I found a shopping mart in a village and bought Dazzling Gleam for my starter Gardevoir. W what do you mean that's not my starter? It it's right there, first slot. Gardevoir, my starter. As night fell, I caught a trap inch because he looked at me the wrong way, and then I looked at the gym leader the wrong way, and this happened. So yeah, gym leaders are cracked in this game, and my goal is to beat one in these 100 days. Fuck. Day eight, I found a boss mischievous and they were level 69. Nice. Day nine, I found an abandoned house and helped myself to all the loot that was left behind. We'll say. Not stealing, not stealing. I didn't steal. Oh, and I gave Dark Pulse to Hunter, so yeah. The next day, I entered one of the server's tournaments because I wanted to know what they were and I was given six random Pokemon and told to kill. If I had a nickel. Well, I did well in the first match, but then the second guy clearly cheated. I mean, look at that haunch crow. So I lost. I'm starting to see a pattern here. I seem to be way weaker than everyone or everything else on the server. That's gotta change. This is the next day of recording. And before I got into this, I tried out the parkour and yeah, I know I'm bad. I wanna get better. I wonder if I could make a 100 days in parkour. Hmm. Anyways, I grinded all night on day 11 and started mowing down trainers with Gardevoir. The next day, I ended up adding another member to the team, and his name is Toxtricity. After that, I found a life orb, so that was sick, and then I found this. I tried to figure out the GTS system in this game, but I didn't succeed. Someone in the chat did tell me to TPA for M-Ball loot, so I did, and I got a rocky helmet for my troubles. A couple slash RTPs later, and I found a Skarmory. Scooped him up, but then a Drudgegon found oh, me. Okay, hi, big boy, big, big, big boy, big, large, large male. And I was intimidated, but I managed to grab him, and now that we have a dragon, yeah. but I managed to grab him, and now we have a giant dragon Let's on our team. Go. That's more like it. Day 14, I caught a Nido King. I probably won't end up using it, but you know, it's nice to have the option. Now it's time to head back home, where I found out to make a PC, you need redstone and glowstone. So we're in the mines. I need a PC so I can access all the Pokemon that I keep just catching out in the wild. Got the redstone? Now I'm mining obsidian because it's time to check out the nether. The reason I have to head to the nether so soon, other than getting a sick fire type, is that I need glowstone. And once I collected it, I found a nether fortress. And check out those manicube parkour skills. Unfortunately, everything was already looted, so I went back to the overworld and made that PC. Pause effect here, vinyl scratch here. You see this orb? Keep an eye on it. It may or may not be really important. Okay, clap on, clap off, 
the clapper. Where's them? I can now access all the mons that I've been throwing in there. So uh, let's get a team going. Now we're outfitted with Gardevoir, Haunter, Quilava, Toxtricity, Drudgegon, and Zoroark. I think that's starting to look nice. I'm also getting sand for glass, and while I wait for both the apricorns to grow and my glass to smelt, I'm collecting things to make my home look nice. While I was looking for granite, diorite, and all the other underused stones, I found something all around underused in the server. Diamonds. That's the funny thing about this game, is now diamonds are practically useless, and bauxite and iron, those are the real prizes. The only thing I really need diamonds for is an enchantment table, which I just so happen to be making a basement for right now. Day 18 was spent making the house purdy. I've never used a lot of these blocks in my builds, and I'm really happy with how this is coming out. The next day, I was smelting apricorns, and in the meantime, decking out the enchantment room basement and making the table. But of course, there's a lot of waiting in this 100 days, that of like growing apricorns, or smelting iron, or bauxite, or apricorns. And doing nothing won't do. That's like a tongue twister. And doing nothing won't do. So I ventured off and looked for cool shit. And then I found the floating rock. Mo we mo 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 mo we mo. It's the mysterious rock that floats in the ocean. Oh mo we mo 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 mo we mo. Anyways, later that night I found trainers and caught a zangoose. Heard to find my house day twenty, and here's a look inside a haunter's face. Good. Okay. Remember that orb I pointed out? Well, I asked my friend Emperor Bliss what the fuck it was and what it did, and he shot back at me with this banger. They are used to summon either Moltres, Zapdos, or Articuno. And to do that, you need a Firestone, Thunderstone, or a Waterstone. So, I'm off to get some. The shards for Firestones are pretty easy to find, but Waterstones and Thunderstones are a bit more tricky. And I want every stone, so I'm searching. Of course, Waterstones are found underwater. Fire by Lava and Thunderstones are only found in extreme hills biomes, and those were a little bitch to find. But it's okay, because I also found a Charmander up on this mountain. I don't know how rare they are, but popular mon gives stimuli, so I catch. I found the rest of my Thunderstones next day, and the temple for Articuno, but I can't just use these, because... I went home and made each stone. I could use any on the orb, but I wasn't going to be the one to choose. I posted this poll on my community tab saying, context is for suckers, vote. And the winner is red, meaning it's Moltres time. Also, side note here, I did slash RTP and immediately found a gem that fucked me so hard my game broke. I had to re-log to fix it. I also could have done slash in battle, but I didn't know that at the time. Anyways, day 25, I made a fire orb, but to fill it, I need the souls of 375 dead Pokemon. So I got to slaughtering. And that means spamming the RTP command. And it's beginning to pay off. Or I'm just really lucky because I found another orb. So now I'm getting Articuno as well because it's my favorite of the three. I also found Giratina Shrine. While I can't do anything with it right now, I took some of the blocks away for a later build. The finds don't stop. Boom, lucky egg. With this, we might actually gain enough levels in these 100 days to stand a chance against the tyrants that are those gym leaders. Sadly, there's trouble in paradise though, because trying to get Articuno with the second orb isn't as easy as it's gonna seem. Instead of the water stone, I actually ended up needing an ice stone, and to get that, I need ice stone shards. So to get that, I need to find an ice plains biome, and those are rare. But finally, it did end up happening. However, after looking around and then Googling, I found out you can only get ice shards by fishing. So we just need a fishing rod, right? Wrong. I need a good rod or higher, and I have no idea how to get one of those. But the upside is, I did find this mart with balls. I bought a ton of Pokeballs from this Pokebart in a random village so that I'd never have to do uh, any Apricorn farming again. So I literally just made all my Apricorn farming useless, like, 28 days into the... Si Fuck. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the whole Good Rod side quest. Let's not get distracted again. Oh, hey, a wormhole! Going through the portal, I was sent to a weird dimension that gave me hella low gravity. And had an inn fortress in it, which of course was already looted. I'm starting to see a trend here. While I was hopping around, I found a beast ball loot that I didn't even know existed, and it gave me a beast ball. Who knew? And then I proceeded to fall out of the world. Anyways, back to the mission. I need blaze rods to make a good rod, to fish up ice shards to make an ice stone that I can use to get Articuno. Blaze rods only drop from fire types, and I can't find shit. Uh... But Night 34 came along and I found someone willing to trade a good rod with me. Shoutouts to not Caden 2. I probably paid way too much money for it, but I realized something. The real way this server runs. Not by Pokemon. Not by being good at Minecraft. N no. Capitalism. Okay, so to recap. To get this 
fucking ice stone. I have tried fishing, looking for blaze rods to fish better, capitalism, using the good rod to get better fish, and ice type Pokemon genocide. I've got two shards to show for this. I asked for help and people just told me to buy it from the server's mart and now I feel stupid. Well, I just wasted three hours of my life. I didn't get any footage today because OBS glitched out, but what I did was important. So here's an MS Paint recreation of the Riolu I caught. I know, I know, it belongs in the mausoleum. You don't have to tell me. Day 37, I got tired of grinding and dealing with the moral dilemma of murdering 375 Pokemon to fuel the Fire Bird God. So instead, I spent the day laying the land for a laboratory. There's a lot of stuff in this game, like trade centers or PCs or fossil revivers. That's my scientific terminology. And I'm gonna need a place to put them all. Day 38, I claimed all of the land and actually started the build. I'm using those temple blocks I found from the Giratina Shrine. Still building on day 39. Now, it's probably a good time to mention that everything I need for this build can be bought at the Mart and just is expensive. So all I have to do to really work up the materials is have money. Capitalism wins again. Oh, and I got to level 20 minor and it gave me three Pokemon certificates that I can redeem. Julia. I'm also looking for bauxite to make all the machines for the lab, but I couldn't find enough, so I fixed it with capitalism. I bet you're wondering what I got from my Pokemon papers. Well, it was a Frillish, Jigglypuff, and Tortuga. Now I need a lot of orange glass, BRB. While I was looking for glass, or sand, glass just isn't found in the wild, I found a hidden item that happened to be an XP all, which for Pokemon nerds is the XP share from X and Y and onward that helps your entire team instead of being worn by one Pokemon. And for non-Pokemon nerds, uh, everybody get experience now, big good. Glass takes forever to smelt, so slash RTP to the rescue. Except whenever you're too far away from the chunk, nothing will smelt, but I didn't know that at the time, so don't mind me, I'm just wasting my time. Day 43, I needed more money, so I tried my hand at gambling, and lost everything. That just shows to go, yeah, the gambling is always rigged. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna try it again, but... Later that day, I got a Pokeball change paper that I used to change the Pokeball from my Gardevoir into a Moon Ball, because the Moon Ball is the best ball. At day 44, I'm doing the usual grind, training my team and sacrificing the souls to the Fire and Ice Bird gods. When Fiddle Faddle told everyone to TPA for an Imball loot. So I did, and I got a Choice Scarf. Don't forget about this, this is very important. And then the server was started. A couple minutes later, the server loaded up, and I immediately saw someone add an item to the GTS without changing the the base price, so it was one dollar. I immediately bought it and sold it for 1,000 poke dollars lower than the cheapest listing. Sorry, honey, that's just business. Speaking of business, sometimes you gotta spend money to make money. So on day 45, I bought a Master Ball from the GTS, and I plan to keep it close. Master Balls seem to be the true currency of this server. That and rare candies, so I'm not selling any of mine. Then I got sand all day. What, being a maniacal businessman isn't gonna build my laboratory roof. I still have to get sand. Still getting glass. I grossly underestimated how long this would take, but at least I'm filling my orbs with the screaming souls of Pokemon. Man, I really am becoming the bad guy. The next day, Camden99 is back, and he offers to sell an Eevee to someone in the chat. And I don't know if you guys know, but one of the mascots, per se, of this channel is a Glaceon. And it also happens to be my favorite Pokemon, because it's just so fucking cute! So you know I needed that. I was too broke, though, so I pitched a dip. I was too broke to I was too broke to afford the EV, so I pitched him a deal that I would trade him my Riolu. Remember MS Paint Riolu? Yeah, that one. So we made the trade and I got my EV. I went to check them out and they ran a luxury ball, so that's a plus. Not as good as a moon ball, but still Then I went back into the mines. It's backbreaking work, but someone's gotta do it, you know? Also, with the XP all, Glaceon leveled up so fast, and after checking its moveset and making sure that I'm not missing anything important, I headed off to my ice biome I've claimed. I went looking for an icy rock. We need these to evolve Glaceon. Glaceon has evolved! That is all. You know something I haven't done yet? Made a bed. I should do that. <sighs> I am tired. Alright. Good night, world. Wonder what tomorrow has in store. <sighs> Good morning, world. Let's go check out how the lab is doing, huh? What? A gift from me to you, Sirid. Do slash keys. Uh, okay. 
Oh. Okay, jokes aside, Seared gave me a key to the galaxy chest as a little present to spice up these 100 days, and I thought I'd open it on day 50. And I got a Terrakion. I spent the rest of the day figuring out what team of six I should have and enchanting my stuff to up my efficiency. Get it? Efficiency? Like, like the enchantment? F fuck you. Fuck you. You're no fun. I also started buying ample amounts of thunderstones. Don't worry, there is a reason for this. Penis. Look, I know this roof looks really weird, but I'm working on it. I like to use this method, keep placing blocks, and eventually it'll look nice. It's it's never failed me before. Day 52, I'm still placing glass. Okay, on day 53, I finally finished the lab, and now it's time to actually fill both these orbs. I need a couple hundred dead souls, so let's get to it. Grinding speed up, go! I'm, I'm doing this with my mouth. I uh, didn't actually keep the audio for the speed up because it would sound bad, so instead... On day 55, I found some M-Ball loot. I keep calling it that because that's what everyone else on the server calls it, even though it sounds stupid. I told people the to TBA to me, and this guy did. B1B7640. Great name, by the way. Real easy to say. I'ma just call you Jeff, because Jeff was so happy that I gave him the M-Ball loot, he threw me 16 luxury balls and told me to TBA to him. And then he did this. He gave me the final orb I needed to get every legendary bird. Let's go. Shout outs to Jeff. He said he'd sub, so if you're watching this, Jeff, thank you. Still grinding though on day 56, and I found that every hour I play on the server, I've actually been getting 10 time tokens, and I can use those to buy a lot of stuff. And I had 600, so I bought one M ball and one park ball. Even though someone tried to scam me out of it, I had no idea what they were, and when I asked this guy, he just tried to, you know, take it. So after a quick Google search, it basically is just a master ball that you can only get in creative. So definitely keeping that. Day 57, I'm still grinding. Day 58, finally filled my fucking orb. Then it's time to head back to the mines. Now that I have fortune on everything, I need ample amounts of all the types of gems and ores down there. And I found diamonds, 30 something diamonds to be specific. Now, they're not that useful in Pixelmon, but I've seen some people pay top dollar for them in the chat, so you know I'm stocking up. Got that business in mind. And more diamonds. I also found a spawner that of course doesn't work, but it had two discs, and I haven't seen any other way of getting any discs in this. So they're rare by assumption, and if it's rare, it's valuable, so mine. Once I made it back to my base, I went to buy the last Thunderstone to make a full set of gear, because when you wear full Thunderstone gear, yeah. Basically, I have speed five, like, forever now, and let me tell you, it's really fun to run around. So that's what I did. Gonna break the fourth wall here on day 60. I'm gonna start replacing the M in M-Ball loot with whatever the fuck I think of while I write this script. So yeah, on day 60, I found another meatball loot and it gave me a power bracer. Still running and grinding and found another mozzarella ball loot. Um, still vrooming. Look, not every day gets to be crazy eventful in 100 days. What more do you want from me? But at nighttime, I went and cleared more land on my property. I've got plans for it. Oh, and I got three more Pokemon for shoveling dirt real good. Yay. I realized that taking two claims from my base is stupid, so I just made one big claim today. Either way, it's all protected. Now, I don't know if I've told you this before, but the best ball is the moon ball. The moon, the moon ball. And I will fight anyone that disagrees. Don't believe me? Disagree in the comment section, see what happens. But I digress. I'm making a farm that is only made to produce the best ball ever. And for that, I need wood. I assume that on day 64, I just worked on the moon ball farm because my notes for day 64 just say farm. So farm. I've been training for quite a while. Most of my mons are approaching level 80 or are already there. And maybe I could take out a low level gym, right? Wrong. I'm still getting butt fucked. Great. Fantastic. No, that's what I wanted. Level 132. That's fine. Good. Perfect even. So that was a no. I'm going to need everyone level 100 if I even want a shot at the hellscape of gems. While I was grinding up though, I did it in the extreme hills biome because it has a chance to spawn Rayquaza like a 0.0003% chance, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Plus, while I'm grinding, I'm filling the ice orb with souls and trainer spawn so I get money. Perfect. One more day away from the joke. Please, please prepare. I was still grinding on day 69. <laughs> <laughs> grinding! Like, like the, the sex thing in day 99? Like the dance and like the...
<laughs> Please laugh. I filled up the ice orbs as well, so that means we only have one million more Pokemon to kill to fill the last orb. There is a lot of blood on my hands. I've been doing the same shit for so long, so let's mix it up a little on day 70 and get adventurous. I built an e-chest. That's, that's what I meant by being adventurous, building an e-chest. No, I'm kidding. That did spark the question though. And as I threw the ender eye, my question was answered. There is indeed an end dimension. So I went there and after looking around an already guttered stronghold, I found the portal and headed in. Clearly I'm not the first person to go here though. And you can't even go to the whole damn end dimension from here. So it's just the dragon platform. And of course the dragon's already dead. I mean, there were Pokemon here. They were pretty cool. If I ever need a Matang, I know where to look. But alas, I headed back home. And if you've seen any of my other 100 Days videos, which you totally should, by the way, they're really good, you'll know what's coming. I have about 13 double chests in there full of items, and I need to do something about it. Something that starts with an O, I think? Octopus? Oculet aversion? Orange? I can't put my finger on it. So, for organization, I'm building a tower or more a giant mart resemblant to the other Pokemon marts like in Goldenrod City or Veilstone. Basically really, really big tower that has stuff in it. This is gonna be a tall task and I don't even have any more space to put stuff. So I'll just build the frame for now and then I'll organize and then I'll build. Organization, speed up here. Woo! Day 75, I gained the first aid skill, which means that when my Pokemon faint after battle, they're revived with one health, Pogchamp. Kept grinding and then found a marionette ball loot. I also fought a giant fungus. This is not relevant, but I did. Mining again, day 76, nothing interesting here. Day 77, I need spruce wood for this tower build, and I live only next to dark oak and oak wood. So I'm spamming slash RTP all day. I fought a gym leader, night 78. What do you think happened? Is it A, I fucking died, B, I fucking died, or C, I fucking died. I'll give you time to answer. Congrats, if you guess C, it's I fucking died. Day 79, I found another Giratina altar. I don't know how to get this thing to work, but maybe that's something I could learn for 200 days. That is, if you guys want it. Leave a like and a comment if you want to see 200 days. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, shill, shill, algorithms, algorithms. Day 80, I'm renovating the tower and working on making it all pretty. Day 81, still building. The next day I finished the tower and I think it ended up looking really nice. Day 83, I admired the tower. Uh, the roof I built still needs a little bit of work, but I'm running out of time to fill my zappy orb with souls, so it's gonna have to do for now. So the past couple days have been all over the place, but in case you lost sight of the overall goal, I still need to level up my team because every gym fucks my ass. I'll need to embrace capitalism. So I bought 20-ish rare candies from a player and hid them away for when it's time. Also, if you're wondering, I got it for 11K, which I think is a pretty good deal. Anyways, I'm off to catch a couple hundred more souls in my bowl. Okay, this isn't important to the plot, but I have to show you guys this. In my opinion, this is the best ingenuity I have ever seen in a Minecraft build. Ring doorbell. <laughs> really hope this Volcarona will be useful and not die all the time. Hint, hint, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. Later that night, I caught an Abra and my Gardevoir hit level 100. That's one of six. Finally took enough lives to fill the Zapdos orb, so now I've got all of them. Only problem is it cost about 10K to reset each shrine, so now I need money to fight them. So we're looking for traders. I can buy 64 rare candies from the GTS. So now I'm gonna need 32,000 for that and 30,000 for Big Spark. Sparkly Big Birds. Here we go again. Day 88, I got enough money to buy rare candies and holy shit, the Ampharos from day 10 or something is back. He's big, scary, and blue. And I am not losing this time. To be honest, he still kicked my ass, but I was eventually able to take him down and he dropped an Ampharosite, which gave me access to the Mega Bracelet. I'm now slightly cooler and my balls are slightly smaller. Another side note, my Terrakion has a special skin. I never noticed this, but I guess it's because it's from the Galaxy Crate. So it's got a galaxy skin. Lovely. Day 89, I sent off looking for the stronghold again because I have to try. It took considerably longer to find the portal again this time, but when I did, I ran up to the center of the battlefield and it was claimed. I tried to respawn and fight the dragon again, but she was claimed. Curse you, Zero Nine Demon Boy. Curse you, I wanted to kill the dragon. Later that day, I was given a lot of eggs. I don't know if this is a nice gesture or spam, so I'll just have to hatch the eggs to find out. I made a very interesting play today. If I'm gonna be able to fight every bird, I'm gonna need money and fast. So I sold my Master Ball for 15K. 
It's okay, I've got two more technically. And with that, I'm ready. I paid the 10k to reset the shrine, and the battle with Articuno began. I fought them with Glaceon, because Glaceon wouldn't do too much damage since they're both ice types, and I needed to make sure I didn't actually kill it which became way more annoying whenever it spammed Roost. It didn't show the ball shaking whenever I threw the ball at Articuno, so I thought it wasn't working, but after some persistence, the first of the elemental birds has been captured. Two to go. Oh, snap! I got it! Let's go! But I have no money, so on day 91, I'm looking for trainers and grinding and also slash RTPing to find a gym that maybe I could win against. We're rapidly running out of days here. Day 92, I got enough money from another battle, so now it's Big Bird Red time. But somehow, I burned the mythical Firebird. I fucking burned the mythical Bird of Fire! And ended up having to throw my Park Ball so this dumb thing didn't burn to death. Let me reiterate, for those that didn't catch that, the bird god of fire was about to burn to death. Bullshit. Day 93, I got a bit more money, still short though, and I found this gym that I think I might be able to win against, but I'm gonna show you guys that later. For now though, I'm gonna build some suspense. I'm literally so close to being able to fight Zapdos, someone just give me 2k. Okay, there we go. Got 4k from this battle, now it's time for Lightning Bird. Zapdos wasn't really that big of a hassle, just gotta throw a lot of Ultra Balls and get mad when it uses Roost. But after a while, I still managed to catch it, and that means only one goal left in these 100 days actually win a gym. These things that have beaten me every single time I've encountered one, I've got to actually win against. Day 95, it's time to prepare. Using all my rare candies, I had just enough to bring all the stragglers on my team to level 100. And using rare candies counted as training Pokemon. And for that, I got two specific Pokemon vouchers as rewards. I can take any Pokemon in any Pokedex and just have them except for legendaries and ditto. But I'm not gonna do that, cause I'm gonna leave those up to you for 200 days. If you wanna see 200 days, let me know and tell me what two Pokemon I should take from these little containers. I also bought Psychic and T-Bolt for the upcoming battle, and I looked through all my held items I've been collecting to find out what would be best for my team. Strategizing, if you will. Day 96, I TP'd to my claim right outside the gym that was a giant bird cage. Yup. It's a flying type gym. The plan here is to just place a healer right outside battle range and lose over and over and over till I can gain some knowledge about this battle. I'm gonna need a lot of strats and luck to win this. Especially because this fucker leads with a Fero that Dynamaxes! Are you shitting me? I... I can't beat that. It will take out everything. Everything that goes up against it. Uh, it's it's gonna kill anything. Sacking Mons will be my only option here. Big problem with that is that this leader also has a Braviary, Zatu, Emolga, Aerodactyl, and Dodrio. I can't afford to sack Mons because they're all gonna be needed to win this fight. It's kinda like a puzzle in a way. I'm not above just spamming revives and full restores and healing because these guys are level 140 and that's bullshit but I need to figure out what and when to do it and how to gain the AI. All while not running out of resources, because if I run out of full restores and revives, it's over. But I didn't have every piece to this puzzle, so I couldn't win. The main problems are Zatu one-shots everything, but Gardevoir, who will already be dead by the time that Zatu comes out. Gardevoir is usually dead because Fero wipes out half my team when it Dynamaxes. Solutions? I bought Shadow Ball for Gardevoir and a ton more revives and full restores. Spent every dollar I had. I'm really gonna need to for this fight. But something was still missing. On a whim, I typed slash time shop and had exactly 200 time tokens. Exactly enough for the final piece of this puzzle, the Focus Sash. The plan here, being Focus Sash with Gardevoir, use Charm on Dynamaxed Fero so Glaceon can take some hits, take out the Fero with only one casualty, and then the battle can properly start. This does rely on the AI not switching out, but it's the best I have. I tried this strat all day, and I was making progress. A big clutch thing for me is that Zapdos can't hurt Amolga very much, and vice versa, so I can use that as a time to revive my team. But that also relies on Amolga not uh, switching out to like Aerodactyl or Braviary and just screwing me over. But I have been known to be lucky in this series. So I kept trying. And on day 98, this is what happened. I've done literally everything. Literally everything. Oh, I didn't switch my fucking thing to the focus band. 
Well, I fucked up there. But then this bitch comes out, and there's nothing I can do. There's nothing. I can't do anything. I can thunderbolt it, and I can do half of itself, but it can do over half of mine. So what the fuck? <gasps> oh, para hacks. That might be strats. This is the dumbest strat ever if I have to rely on para hacks. I didn't even play this well. Fuck. Kind of want to just lose and try again later. Fuck it, they're getting paralyzed here. Oh wait, no, it's slower because it's para-haxed. Okay. Dodrio's gonna pull out dick fuck. And <laughs> that's gonna be the end of me there. There it is. God damn, how are you so strong? Oh, I know, you're 40 levels higher than me. 40. You're 40 levels higher. All right, this thing's just gonna get bodied, but it's fine. We have Glaceon. Who it's gonna pull out either Bra- Ooh, what? Quick it? You you didn't, like, do fucking drill run? You, you, you idiot. You dummy. You stink fuck, man. And flame body burned Dodrio. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Emolka. What the fuck can Emolka do? Besides have motor drive. Bring back Zapdos and see what this thing can do. Thunderbolt. Okay, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. I think we're gonna set Glaceon for Terrakion here. That's fine. Braviary comes out. Braviary gets bodied. But uh, he missed. We missed. We missed. Actually, fun fact. Funny, funny. Really, really quirky thing about this. We missed. We just lost our lead. We literally just lost our lead. Unless this out goes, it doesn't. It, it needed to. Fuck. Shit. And here comes a Molga with pile drive cockfuck. Who knew it was? It was. It had its secret move, cockfuck. I mean, it just makes it faster. It just, it, it'll keep getting faster to the day I die, so it's fine. Thunderbolt comes in. We bring Terrakion back out. Let's use Rock Slide. That's ha it's, it's a fucking Amolga. It's gotta die, okay. It held on using Focus Sash. It's got a fucking Focus Sash! Ah! Oh! Dude! You've gotta be fucking me. Ooh, we just got a free revive. Okay. It's not over yet, boys. It, it really should be over, but it's not. Braviary's been frozen solid. Oh my god, we get at least one free move. Because he's probably going to switch, because who the fuck wants a frozen solid mon on the field? Terrakion, come back to life. Braviary is frozen solid again. Give me one more move. Give me one more freebie. Give me one more freebie. Braviary is frozen solid one last time, boys. Glaceon ice beamed it. Braviary is more like Bravey did. And here comes Firo. Firo cannot kill because he actually has really small ball sack syndrome. And that's fine because we still respect it. Dodrio comes out and this is scary. Dodrio is frightening. We're going to max health, see what it can do. I, I don't think I've seen it fight Glaceon. Oh, he does nothing because he's burned! Oh, shit! I forget that the dude's burned and his fucking physical attack is just... It's its just gone! It's just gone! Thunderbolt fucking hurts, but that's fine by me because Terrakion comes in with the rock slide. And I win! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> yes! Yes! Icarus get fucked! <laughs> oh, that was so hard! Oh, that was so hard! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> yes! I did it! With the power of lucky misses, actually getting the 10% freeze, and a burn from Volcarona who somehow didn't get one shot that round, even though every other time they died immediately, I did it. I beat the gym leader, took their badge, healed my team up, 
and headed back home, where I hung up my badge in my lab and added seven more spaces for seven more badges. But we can save that for 200 days. Day 99, I spent sprucing up my base and making things look nice. These 100 days have been insane, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and a comment. They really help out more than you could ever know. And if you'll excuse me, I have something important to work on. So for now, I'll do an F1 showcase of the base that I built in 100 days. Once again, big shout outs to Sirad for letting me partner with him and do this fucking 100 days on his server. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys did too. Anyways, my name has been Eclipse, EQ for short, and thank you for watching. <laughs>